presentation that I did with a colleague is titled 12 Strategies to Promote Online Growth While Ensuring Quality. And it's really a look at a variety of administrative topics related to online education. So one of those is creating a structure at your university that is more centralized in nature. So there's one person that oversees online education. So there's a director of online education or a director of e-learning. Uh, that way you have one person who's kind of in charge, one person who can answer questions, one individual creating one policy and procedures manual. So you might not have then a variety of schools or colleges within your institution creating their own policy and procedures manual, creating their own professional development opportunities, um, figuring out how to try to fund faculty and staff to develop online courses because that can get to be pretty confusing and there could be some inequalities there. So that was uh, one thing that we talked about in that workshop. Another one is actually creating a policy and procedures manual. I would say 60 to 70 percent of universities don't have a policy and procedures manual specific to online education. So whether that um, policy and procedure manual have things related to evaluating instructors, promotion, tenure, enrollment caps or limits. I think it's important, again, and if this can be across the university, not so much by department or school or college, that helps with consistency as well. So that's another one. Um, so just a variety of things. Uh, faculty buy-in is pretty important when it comes to online education and advancing online education at your institution or at colleges and universities in general. So things that you can do to promote online education, yet you pull in the faculty and you get their support. So we do a you know, the faculty for us who teach online uh, do a lot of showcases uh, or presentations on campus to other faculty um, to help promote online education. I, I always say, who better to promote uh, online education to a full tenured faculty professor who's been teaching on your campus for 35 years and is resistant to online education than to hear from a full tenured faculty member who's been teaching on your campus for 35 years who's having success with online education. They won't listen to me probably, but they'll listen to one of their colleagues. Pretty practical, like, you know, create a policy and procedures manual or have a course review process in place, whether you use Quality Matters or you develop your own rubric. So they're pretty hands-on, practical, you know, applicable things, but it's not always easy to do them. It can seem overwhelming depending upon where you're at. If you've been doing this for 10 years and you have these things in place, then you can tweak and revise them. Um, but if you're just starting out and you're looking at this big to-do list or this task list to complete, it can be overwhelming. So that's where it's nice to have this advisory board to maybe set up priorities. You know, this is what we're going to do first. And this is what we need to do, do next. And you can kind of um, determine who might do what in regards to you know the, the items that need to get done at your university to advance online education. Yeah, that's a really you know a good question and one thing that we do on our campus which is one of the strategies that we talked about uh, in our presentation is we have an online education advisory board so that could be folks from uh, my unit, online education or instructional designers. It could be administrators from different offices across the campus, uh, whether that's student support services, whether that's the provost office, uh, individuals from continuing education and extension, could be uh, individuals from various units like records and registration or business services. So I found that a lot of schools Many schools don't have an online education committee or an online advisory group. So that's one way to get these various folks in these different offices and units together, kind of on the same team, working at the same goal and meeting once a week or once a month, whatever that might be. At my institution, it's been more incremental. It's um, slow, many times it uh, in institutions within higher education, change can be challenging. Um, so getting that faculty buy-in is important. Sometimes creating policies on campuses and universities can be hard and it can take a fair amount of time. So we have found that one small success builds on another success and it builds on another success. So I think we have seen much incremental change and it's kind of from the ground up. It's from student interest and faculty interest. It's not from a chancellor or a provost or a chief financial officer saying you need to do this 
by next week or within six months we need to have five online degree programs in place so at least at my institution and i think this is probably the better way to go about the change is have that come from the ground up from faculty if possible and then small incremental changes i think that really helps with the quality piece as well Sure. Uh, in regards to scaling, we almost do the opposite of what many institutions who want to grow quickly do. So an example will be um, someone wants, an institution that wants to offer 10 online courses might pay someone five or six or seven thousand dollars to develop a class like a tenured full professor and then they might take that class and have six or eight or ten or twelve adjuncts teach the class. We don't do that at my institution. We fund faculty to develop courses, and uh, they have a hopefully a good experience, then they develop another class. But we don't do that model where we develop one class, and then we take that course and give it to adjuncts to teach. Uh, we've never done that. Um, but if you want to grow and you want to expand quickly, that's one model to use. I, I think, again, you know, 99% of the classes that we offer at my institution, we offer through our normal, traditional, on-campus, tenure-track faculty and instructional academic staff. We recommend not going above 25 students. That's what we recommend, and there's actually a, a policy on my campus that states um, enrollments in online classes should not exceed enrollments in face-to-face -face classes. You know, honestly, what I do it, on a day-to-day -day basis, I just try to provide support and resources to faculty to be successful, whether they want to teach an online course or to develop an online program. So we, uh, we don't have set goals or a, a real defined strategic plan. You know, in 10 years, we want 15 online degree programs, or in three more years, we want you know, to offer an extra 100 classes like that. There's been pretty steady and significant growth on my campus, kind of doing things the way that we've done them. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you know, um, I always, when someone new, uh, a new instructor or faculty member wants to teach online, you hear many things like, I really don't want to because I'll lose that connection with students, or I don't know how to get started. And I found, you know, I've been in higher ed for maybe 20 years teaching for 20 years, teaching online for 10, um, I've found that good instructors are good instructors. They develop and deliver good content, they interact with their students, they're there to answer questions, they let their students know that they care about their learning, um, you know, they provide timely and meaningful feedback, you know, they engage their students whether face-to-face -face or online. So I think there are more similarities than differences when you talk about teaching online and face-to-face -face. and uh, sometimes it's just sharing that and getting that buy-in from faculty to kind of make that happen so we review our online courses um, with a rubric that we created on our own I don't know some institutions use quality matters or there are others out there as well but I always try to say try and treat online and face-to-face -face the same we use the same teaching evaluation for online courses or face-to-face -face courses whether you teach online or face-to-face -face, you get paid the same it's the same amount on your workload um, it counts the same for promotion and for tenure so if possible um, i always try to encourage folks to do that to treat face-to-face -face and online equally.